In this lesson, we're going to talk about the flow of migrations and how that differs whenever you're working with just a local database versus a database that already has production data on it. So the reason that this differs is because whenever you roll back migrations, that's going to get rid of any tables, columns, or whatever within your database that that migration changed, as well as any data that that table, column, or what have you might be storing. And it's very vital that you never run the risk of accidentally purging production data from your database. So let's say both our roles and users migrations have already run on production. We would not want to make any changes to either of these migrations and instead create a separate migration to alter either of these two tables if we needed to. So in this lesson, we're going to take a look at that in particular. So first, let's start with the easy stuff and say that we're still just working locally. For example, if we wanted to go about adding in a default value to our role ID column here at present point in time, and we can confirm this by taking a look at our database structure, the column default for our role ID is null. So if we do not explicitly set this whenever user is created, it's just going to be set to null. And at the database level, we can set that via a default to value and then specify a value for this. So we can do roles off of our enum and specify it as member. Now, since we're working locally and this migration hasn't actually hit a production database, we're free to go ahead and make the change directly within our user's migration. And then the way that we would go about getting this change actually applied to our database is by jumping into our terminal here and running node ace migration. And you can run refresh to roll back and then run again, or you can actually roll back and then node ace migration run individually. So refresh would just run both of those commands within one go, but there you can see it individually. So we rolled back, so we reverted both of these migrations and then we just reran them. So that would pick up that default to value change that we applied to our role ID. So now if we go take a look at our column default for our role ID, let's give it a refresh here back into the structure. You can see now it's set to one. So that change did get applied successfully just by changing our existing migration. However, if we were to undo that change, roll back and rerun, so now we're back to that default value being null. And now let's say that this has already run in production. So our users table and our roles table already exist within production. At that point in time, we would not want to make that alteration directly within this migration file. And instead we would want to create a separate migration file to make that change. So we can jump back into our terminal here and run node ace make migration to create a separate migration. And you can name this whatever you've deemed applicable. I'm going to call it users underscore add underscore role ID default. And then we can also specify the table that this should get applied to. So we can do hyphen hyphen table equals and then specify it for our users. And what that will do is if we actually jump into that migration file here, it will default the table name to users and give us an alter table up and down method call. So if we contrast that with our previous two migrations, these were set with create table by default. This one will be set to alter table. And now you might be thinking, okay, so all that I need to do is reassign that column within this alter and then reapply the default to or whatever change it is that you want to make. And you should be okie dokie to go ahead and just rerun your migration. So let's go ahead and try that out and see what happens. So node ace migration run. And you'll see that we're greeted with an error because it's trying to alter the table by adding the column role ID with that default value. So it's attempting to add in another column called role ID and it's running into an error because that column obviously already exists from our previous migration. So if I was adding in an additional column that did not exist on my users table, you would just define whatever column it is that you want to exist within your database now and it would run just fine. But if you're altering an existing column, all that you need to do is define what column it is that you want to target. So in this case, table.integer role underscore ID specify that you want to alter that column and then make the alteration. So now if we give this a save, jump back into our terminal here, I'm going to clear that out and let's run node ace migration run again. That will run successfully because now it knows that it needs to alter a column instead of creating a column. So if we jump back into our database here, refresh, you can see now our default is set back to one just as we'd like it. So that's the approach that you would wanna take if you're working with migrations that have already run on production, because had we made the change within our user's migration, we would have had to have rolled back and then rerun the migration in order to pick that change up, which would have purged our data from this user's table. And obviously we don't wanna delete all of our users. So next let's take a look at the use case where maybe we want to add in an additional column. So for example, on our roles table here, let's say maybe we wanted an additional description column or something of the sort. Again, if we were working locally, all that we'd need to do is table.string, description, give it a limit and set it to nullable or not nullable. Again, the default is going to be nullable. So if you want it to be nullable, you can just leave that off. And then we would need to roll back. So node ace migration, roll back. Now let's pause here for a second and take a look 
at our Adonis schema here. Let's take a look at the actual data within it. And let's note the batch column here. So our role and users tables were both created within batch one, whereas our user role ID default value was created within batch two. Remember a batch is incremented every time that you run. So whenever we first ran, that was creating our role and users table. And then whenever we second ran, that was adding in our default role ID value. And the rollback command will just go back a single batch. So if we were to just roll back by the default, we would just be undoing our default role ID setting. If we take a look at the help options for this, you can see that we have within here an option to specify the batch number that we wanna go back to. So we could do node ace migration rollback hyphen hyphen batch. And you can see in the note here, use zero to roll back to the initial state. So we could do zero. So in order to run all the way back, we can specify zero for that. And that will undo everything. There is an alternative command that you can do for this as well. And that is migration reset. That will just roll back all the way to zero. So you can take advantage of both of those options. Um, if you don't need to go all the way back, then you would want to use migration rollback and then specify the specific batch number that you want to go back to within your Adonis schema batches. Back to the point at hand though, in order to pick up the change of adding our description onto our rules migration here, we would need to go ahead and just node ace migration run to recreate all of these. And now one last thing to note here is now if we refresh our Adonis schema, all of these are within batch one because now they're all created within the same run. But if we take a look at our rules, now we have a description within here as well. Again, let's go ahead and run through the use case of that being production. So let's do node ace migration roll back get rid of that change that we added to our roles migration. And now let's create another migration to actually apply that change because now we're taking a look at what this use case would look like if roles had already run within our production database. So node ace make migration, and we can call this roles underscore add description or whatever you feel is applicable there, hyphen hyphen table roles. And let's dive into there. So since it does not exist within our database, all that we need to do is define it. So table.string description 255 nullable, and that should do it. So now we should be good to go ahead and do node ace migration run. So now if we refresh our roles, and you'll see that our description was added in, despite it being all the way in the back, it does indeed exist. Let's go ahead and do node ace migration roll back again. And now let's say that our roles already exist within our production database. We have our member and our admin, and now we want to add the description column, but we also want to seed that with some data for both our member and our admin. So we can make use of this defer again to do that async db. And how you do this is up to you. And again, this might look foreign since we haven't covered querying or inserting or anything of the sort yet beyond what we did within our previous migration lesson. Um, but let's go ahead and just await db from this dot table name dot where ID is roles dot and let's specify admin first, I suppose. And then we can call update description and say our application super user. And then we can do await db from this table name where ID roles dot member update description our application default user. And now after the alterations made on a roles table to add in the description column, it will run this defer method, which will then query our admin record and update it with a description value. And then it will do the same for our member as well. And then lastly, it would also be good to fill in our down method. So within our down method, all that we would want to do is undo whatever we're doing within up. We don't need to worry about getting rid of what we did within our this.defer method, since getting rid of the column as a whole would get rid of that value there as well. So we can do table dot drop column and specify it to drop our description. We can do the same for our default value as well. This would look a little bit different since we need to alter it. So table dot integer role ID dot alter default to null. So since we don't want to get rid of the role ID column altogether, we still want it to exist. And it would be our user's migration that would get rid of it altogether if we needed to. All that we want to do within this migration is just alter it back to having a default value of null should this migration get rolled back. So now we can give this a save. I'm gonna check node ace migration status to see where we left off. Looks like none of them have run, so we can clear that and then run node ace migration run. All right, now that all of those have run, let's verify that our roles now have a description value. So let's jump back into our roles and there we go. We can see our application default user and our application super user for our member and admin have been populated. Now let's go ahead and try roll back. So node ace migration roll back and all of those successfully reverted. So it looks like both of these ran without a hitch as well. So the important takeaway from this lesson is 
If you have tables or migrations that have already executed within your production environment, don't alter those migrations at all. Create separate migrations to make those alterations that you need to those particular tables. If you're working locally and nothing has hit production yet, then you're a okay to make whatever changes you need. Just roll them back, rerun them, and you'll be good to go.